okay in this video I'm going to end up the story of infective endocarditis I'm going to talk about the management of infective endocarditis the complications and the prognosis of infective endocarditis and the prognosis and the how to prevent infective endocarditis Let's start with the management of infective endocarditis in severely ill patients, if a patient come you with an acute case, okay, severely ill, you have first of all to stabilize the patient. This is this make logic, okay? How to stabilize the patient or for what? You have to stabilize the patient for cardiac failure, for pulmonary edema, for low cardiac output. Because actually the most important problems of infective endocarditis are related to cardiac failure or low cardiac output pulmonary demand so on okay so you have to stabilize the patient with these conditions with therapeutic drugs after that you have to take three blood cultures from separate venipuncture over 24 hours okay you have to obtain three blood cultures over 24 hours why to obtain blood cultures before antibiotic administration to prevent false negative values because when you administer the uh, uh, antibiotic before uh, withdrawing the blood cultures you may have false negative values of the uh, blood cultures due to the administration of the antibiotic after the uh, uh, taking the blood cultures you can start empirical antibiotic while waiting the result okay in acute cases especially you have to start immediately with empirical antibiotic okay even before the results of the blood cultures okay uh, this is in acute cases actually in sub acute cases you can sometimes wait for the culture before the administration of antibiotic what anti perical antibiotics to give you can give anti staphylococcus semisynthetic penicillin naficillin oxacillin methicillin plus aminoglycoside gentamicin okay if you have a MRSA you can give vancomycin okay after the uh, culture and sensitivity are there okay and the microorganism now is uh, uh, appear appeared okay you can use selective antibiotics for example the most common cause of infective endocarditis the streptococci viridans you can give four weeks of penicillin g okay or two weeks of penicillin g plus gentamicin aminoglycoside okay this is in adult this is in adult in children you have to give four weeks of penicillin G okay sometimes the medical treatment is unsuccessful you have persistent bacteremia though the treatment of uh, four weeks administration of a uh, good antibiotic okay. or you have sometimes myocardial or valvular abscess sometimes you have valve annulus okay or rupture of the valve leaflets they are all dangerous conditions of the infective endocarditis okay valve annulus valve leaflet valve abscess myocardial abscess unsuccessful uh, medical treatment of the uh, infective endocarditis or you have refractory prosthetic valve or recurrent empolic complications okay if you have one or more of these conditions you have to move to the surgical a treatment of infective endocarditis okay surgical treatment not going to t to get into details of the surgical treatment of infective endocarditis but you have to know the indications for the surgical treatment we just mentioned them okay now the complications and the prognosis of infective endocarditis actually we divide the complications of infective endocarditis into two uh, major groups the first one is the major complications due to direct effect of infective endocarditis which is destruction to the heart or the heart valves or both of them okay destruction to the heart or the heart valve due to the vegetation 
okay it's a major complication of infective endocarditis the second complication second group of complications is distant complications due to embolization of the vegetation i told you what uh, is vegetation if you have an embolization of this vegetation for example to the lung uh, forming pulmonary uh, pulmonary embolism or to the brain uh, constituting uh, CVA or seizures or uh, so on to spleen, splenomegaly and so on okay so this, you may have septic or sterile impoli that may cause some uh, complications like CVA, pulmonary embolism and etc okay the major complications what were they destruction of the heart or heart valves will cause you regurgitation for example or actual defect in the leaflet of the valve the valve itself sometimes may be embolizing due to the it will be fragile after sometimes of uh, having the infection okay and it may emboli so we may have actual defect of the leaflet of the valve abscess of the valve or the heart which is an indication for surgical treatment of infective endocarditis the abscess okay it is a direct complication of presence of vegetation so it is abscess okay abscess or regurgitation or actual defect of the valve they are all local complications how to monitor these complications you can monitor them by echocardiogram scanning okay or by physical examination what about the prognosis of infective endocarditis? The overall prognosis of infective endocarditis is good, okay, but it still depends on the microorganism. Let's just get back to the microorganisms that cause infective endocarditis. Okay, here we are. The uh, bacterial microorganism like Streptococcus viridans has an excellent uh, prognosis. For example, 90% of streptococcus viridans uncomplicated cases will cure okay in staphylococcus aureus we have 60 to 75 percent cure in enterococcus we have 75 to 90 percent cure or they all about 80 percent cure okay most of cases but in some fungal or in fungal infection the prognosis or or prognosis actually is poor and bad prognosis so fungal infection is associated with a poor prognosis so streptococcus viridans 90 percent the staphylococcus aureus 60 to 75 percent the enterococcus about 75 to 90 percent they are all good prognosis okay this is about the prognosis now let's move to the final point of the infective endocarditis the prevention how to prevent infective endocarditis prevention of infective endocarditis is with prophylactic antibiotic uh, with some procedures that may predispose for infective endocarditis like what like the dental care okay when we talked about the risk factors for infective endocarditis we talked about the dental care as a, a major risk factor okay dental procedures that involve in manipulation of the gingiva okay gingival tissue and the apical region of the teeth okay you should give a prophylactic antibiotic invasive procedures okay this is mm, no w here invasive procedures of the respiratory tract okay of the infected skin or the muscles and invasive procedures of these things the respiratory tract the muscles the uh, skin okay may predispose for infective endocarditis so you have to give prophylactic antibiotic also genitourinary procedures is associated with uh, you have to give prophylactic antibiotic also the obstetric and gynecological procedures you have to give antibiotic gi procedures the the doctors used to give a prophylactic antibiotic but nowadays it is not recommended to give with gi procedures okay what are the antibiotics to give with dental procedures with the invasive procedure of spatial tract infected skin and muscles and genitourinary tract okay you have to give or the best uh, thing to be given is the oral amoxicillin okay 50 
milligram uh, per kilo uh, for every kilogram okay and the maximum dose should not exceed two uh, grams okay when to give 30 to 50 uh, minutes before the procedure 30 to 50 minutes before the procedure you have to give oral amoxicillin 50 milligram per kilo per each kg okay with maximum dose of two grams okay if you have a beta lactamase allergy okay for uh, you ha can give clindamycin or azithromycin instead of amoxicillin clindamycin or azithromycin actually prolonged or continuous prophylaxis is not recommended for endocarditis prophylactic uh, prophylaxis itself is still a place of debate between the doctors okay but if you uh, want to give prophylactic antibiotics this, these are the indications okay and these are the drugs to be given amoxicillin the clindamycin or azithromycin beta lactamase uh, allergy okay what is the dose 15 mg per kg with maximum two to 30 to 50 minutes so this is a story of infective endocarditis from a to z okay we started with the uh, definition of infective endocarditis pathogenesis then we move to the microorganisms that cause infective endocarditis the clinical manifestation of infective endocarditis okay the laboratory finding what to expect in lab uh, results infective endocarditis the duke's criteria to diagnose infective endocarditis and then we moved finally to the management and complication prognosis and prophylactic or prevention of infective endocarditis thank you very much for watching this video see you in the next video talking about other subject of pediatrics medicine thank you very much